Welcome everyone to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. Today, we are going over the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and we are going to be previewing the conference championships, the final four. Four teams left, only two are going to the Super Bowl. We have the NFL expert, the head producer of the L7C, Mr. Justin Ackendale. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, brother. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. We just finished that divisional round. We got the final four. Right here, right now. Yep, we are finally there. Final four of the NFL. Some teams we thought would be here. Some other teams we like, what the hell? But we here. Oh, man, that is true. That is true. We are going to go over the divisional round. We're going to recap some of the bigger games. We're going to do the final four preview. But before we do that, Justin, got to throw this in because these happened on Sunday. And even though. We are a football pod. Got to throw in some basketball. Shout out oh. to the Ohio State Lady Buckeyes pulling off that win against number two Iowa in Columbus. I was in attendance. Most watched women's game regular season in 14 years. Uh, 18,660 people there. The most people at a women's game this season. The most in Buckeye history. And they pulled it out, man. The crowd was jumping, nationally televised, a whole nine yards. So. I had to shout them out. Yeah, that game was crazy. I was um at the gym for the duration of that game for most of the game. And when I went upstairs to look at the TVs and see what was going on, it was so early in the game. And while I was stretching, I saw Caitlin Clark hit two step back threes that to start the game. Get, <laughs> to start the game that will get your favorite NBA player benched. So <laughs> yeah, that that was some high level basketball right there. Kudos yeah. to those ladies. And, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, man. Like we're because of my seats in warm-up, she wasn't missing. So I was like, oh, it's going to be one of these types. So when you hit those first two step-back threes, like you said, any other player is getting benched shooting that. And it's just I, like... I'm hmm. telling you, that that is a bad bitch right there. Caitlin Clark, that... How many points she had? Did you say she almost had, like, 50 in the game? She finished with, uh, she finished with 45. Wow. Yeah, she finished with 45. Then Cody McMahon on Ohio State finished with 33-11. 33 JC Sheldon finished with 27. Like it, it was really high level basketball being played. Like it was a great treat to watch and have the whole football team was there. Aaron Nolan, your guy who you got some faith in come in. He was there. Um, a lot of top Columbus natives, Galloway, I think Clorette Smith and all them were there as well. So it was crazy, man. Yeah, you see what Caitlin Clark Clark do? She a move, she a needle mover. She a needle mover. Mm-hmm. You know, but then in terms of wrestling, the needle mover, you got to have a good dance partner. Got to have a good dance partner. Yeah, I don't know who. I mean, and Iowa was, um, they were on a winning streak going into that game, too. Number two in the country. They haven't lost since regular season against, like, Kansas State. That was our first Big Ten loss. So, it, it was crazy because, I mean, now it makes more things interesting, women's Big Ten with them and Ohio State. And I think, too, people forget, like, Ohio State obviously isn't a slouch. They won the Big Ten in 2021. Um, last year, last year when they played Caitlin Clark in Columbus, Ohio State was the number one team in the nation. They were 19 and 0. Ohio Iowa was their first loss. And I mean, last year Ohio, Ohio Iowa went to the championship, like everyone knows. Ohio State was in the Elite Eight, and they beat UConn to get to the Elite Eight. So, Big Ten women's is significantly better than the Big Ten men. More oh, competition. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now conference wise. Are they better than the SEC? Because I know they got I know they got some hitters they down got, there. LSU, real. South Carolina, Tennessee. South Carolina South Carolina's still undefeated and they lost their top draft picks. So no, yeah. there it's it'd be a real thing because it would be those ones versus Ohio State, Iowa, uh, Indiana. Maryland was dope too. Maryland is where uh final four outstanding player uh, Reese came from last like she transferred from Maryland down to LSU. So yeah, yeah that's did. tough. That's tough. I just give a slight to SEC because they won the title last year. Yeah, I did watch um, LSU play a couple weeks ago. They were at Auburn, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, they took the L. Auburn came, <laughs> Auburn came and took. They lunched that game. They were ready. Oh, oh shit! Shit's crazy out here. And peep USC women. They got a phenom freshman who she's probably going to be the next face of the company. But it depends on what Cody McMahon, who dropped the thirty three and twelve. You know, I would say she's only a sophomore, so. Yeah, I'm I'm telling you, you can get me to sit and watch college women's college basketball 
way longer before you can get me to watch men's college basketball. Oh, that yeah. shit is fucking <laughs> hot garbage. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, it's 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 rough. That's why man, my Sunday, my Sunday was perfect, man. I had that high level game and then I went straight to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that was a great lead in to the action, the NFL action on Sunday. Like mm-hmm. for sure. Shit, those three games back to back to back mm-hmm. like that. Oh yeah. Sunday was Sunday was the sports lover's dream. It was. And let's start off with the weekend main event, really. Chiefs at the Bills. I really can't believe I'm about to say this line. The Chiefs won the game 27 to 24. I can't believe I said that, Justin. I, uh, we, I can't believe it. I, I'm still speechless over it. I'm at a loss for words, too. Like, this was Buffalo shot. Like, this is, they have everything lined up for them. You have a down Chiefs team. You have them at home. And shit, you get a turnover, a devastating fucking turnover with McKeel, with McKeel Hartman um, fumbling that bitch out the end zone for a touchback. Mm-hmm. And the Chiefs still find a way to win the game. Is absolutely insane. Yeah, the Chiefs won the game 27 24. I thought it was the best game of the playoffs. It, it honestly might have been the game of the year. Just like with the stakes involved, two quarterbacks, shit, the, the, the coaches. Yeah, th- that was just a um, high-level football game in general. The difference in, difference in the game, honestly, was just how efficient the Chiefs' um, offense was. And it was crazy to see because they haven't done that shit all season. I mean, no. they average 7.7 yards of play versus the Bills, four. 0.7 yards per play. They average 9.2 yards a pass attempt versus the Bills, um, 4.2 yards a pass attempt. So the Bills weren't even throwing the ball downfield, which was odd to me. But, yeah, I mean, Stephon Diggs has a chance at the end of the game. He had a couple drops. This couldn't get the – um, this couldn't take the top off the defense at all. Like, couldn't push the ball downfield whatsoever. And then the Chiefs, even on the ground, they were – um, they're after six yards of carry versus the Bills – um. 4.7 yards of carry. So the Chiefs' offense was efficient. The Bills had the ball way longer. Time of possession, they had the ball for 37 minutes. Kansas City just did more with the ball when they had it than the Bills. The Bills, you know, looking at the stat sheet, they outgained them. They had more first downs. They let time for possession. They won the turnover battle. And they um they still couldn't um get the win. And I thought in the fourth quarter when they were, um when they got the ball back, the Chiefs went um the Chiefs punt the ball back to them. It was about eight minutes left in the game, and they and they get the ball to the um KC twenty six yard line about a minute um forty seven left, and they kick a field goal, and we all know they missed that field goal. But like even if even they would have made the field goal, it was too much time for Patrick Mahomes. The way he was playing in that game, he would have went right down the field and tied that game right back up. And the third and nine before that, they take a deep shot instead of just you know I thought that was four down territory. I thought they should have. You know, try to keep the ball and not give it back to um, the Chiefs because, you know, you can kick a field goal, you know, later when, like, maybe under 30 seconds to tie the game. I just didn't like how – I just, like, didn't like how they um they handled that situation late in the game and in the fourth quarter like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, KC gets the ball back, and they just run the clock out at that point. It was a classic game before, like, before the fourth quarter. I was thinking it was about to be better than their divisional championship game that went the overtime, but yeah, it didn't end up being that way. And the Bills got some question marks. They got some shit they got to figure out. <laughs> man, I just, with Buffalo, man, for years, for the past years, three, four years, you have said if you get this team at home, that's the difference. You are going to beat Kansas City if you get him at home. Buffalo, every week since like week eight or whatever, has been a playoff game, really. They got this number two seed. They got Kansas City at home. They Fans came and shoveled that damn snow so that that field <laughs> would be clear. And you're talking all of this stuff, and then you lose, like, I, I I don't care. Officially on this L7C, Bills can never be Super Bowl contenders until they win a Super Bowl. That that's <laughs> done. I'm I'm so sick and tired of the Bills because every time we think they're finally gonna do it, they don't. Every time. It, and these past sh- two years, 
They don't even make the AFC Championship game. They go home in the divisional round when they're hosting the home game. Nah, man. Nah, it's it's I'm I'm done with them. Yeah, last year was definitely more egregious because the Bengals absolutely whooped their ass in the mm-hmm. divisional round in the snow. But I mean, Josh Allen was doing enough to win the game. I mean, for some reason they weren't calling you know deeper pass shots, but running the ball wise, him running the ball like that shit was working. Like. They just couldn't. They just couldn't move the ball as officially as the Chiefs were, Chiefs were, and I, I, I guess some of their injuries were to blame for that. But yeah, the Bills should have won that game. They, you know, you you have the home field advantage. You have Josh Allen. You have Stephon Diggs who didn't show up. I mean, Shakir had a pretty good game. And well, I'll admit Shakir on that wide open touchdown. Yeah, I mean, he had a couple. He had a couple misses in the game, but. I ain't gonna put it on him. I thought McDermott could have done a better job handling handling the clock in that situation, not leaving it up to the kicker to kick that field goal. And even if they do make the field goal, it's too much time. This shit would have been like Kansas City would have went right down the goddamn field and they would kick the field goal and, and then what? We still in the same spot that we are. So what do they do, man? That's 0 3 against the Chiefs. Josh Allen's never combined. Josh Allen's never beat the two best quarterbacks in the AFC in the playoffs. Like, what do you do? His cap hit's about to happen. You paid Von Miller all that money. Yeah, he was hurt, but he got no sacks. Like, what do you do? Should probably. And if if Kansas loses, that's another quarterback in the AFC's gone to the Super Bowl. So now you got to look at another team you have to compete with. What do you do, man? They got they got to figure some shit out. Draft some, pl- bring some players in. Draft some young talent that they can develop and get back there. Because with Josh Allen's contract, I don't know how much um you're going to be able to sign free agents. Actually, he has years left. So here's what these fucking NFL teams do when they sign these big quarterback contracts. There's so many years on the contract, so you can mm-hmm. push some of the you can push money you know into the future where um, you don't have to um. It doesn't have to be as big as a cap hit. Like, for the Cowboys, for example, next year, Dak is in the last year of his contract. That's why his cap hit is $50 million. There ain't no more years to push back to. Mm-hmm. So they either got to give him another contract or let him walk after next season, which is a whole different conversation. But the Bills have Josh Allen tied up, so you have that position handled. You got you have a young running back of James Cook. I don't know what Stephon Diggs is going to I don't know if he's a free agent or not, or you think about trading him, but yeah, the Bills are going to have to get younger, get healthier on defense, maybe get get some of their guys back on defense, you know, try it again next year. It's really for real. That's all they can do. I mean, I'm not going to come out here and say that they should, you know, look for another quarterback, get another quarterback other than Josh Allen. I ain't going to say that at all, but yeah, they got to do some soul searching. They got to figure some shit out because what they're doing right now is not working at the moment. What about next year about getting a new coach? Is this as far as he could take them? Because this is really looking like this is as far as they can go. I mean, you had I've, one AFC championship game. The rest, divisional round, you're out. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I mean, everyone else is gone. Offensive coordinator is gone. Mm-hmm. They lost their um, defensive coordinator last year, Leslie Frazier. The last piece is McDermott. So, yeah, I, I think at this point, yeah, you got to look for someone other than McDermott with some of the coaches that are out here on the market right now. You still have Bill Belichick looking for a job, Mike Brable, um, Jim Harbaugh. So yeah, it might be, it might be time to um, think of be thinking about someone else to um, run the, run the um, franchise. Yeah. Cause you just see like, and we talk about it every year since with this podcast has started, the bills treat the regular season game at Kansas city. Like it's a playoff, like it's a super bowl. Every time. I don't understand how they beat them every time in the regular season. But when it really matters, they cannot beat Kansas City. And and with Kansas City, their offense has been terrible a lot of this year. But then when it really matters, th- that was the most efficient their offense has looked all year. Oh, no question. Not even enough for debate. I think Patrick Mahomes is just that guy. When he gets to the playoffs, he turns it up to a different level. And, you know, we're going to talk about the game um, co- upcoming this week. You know, six straight years, six straight AFC championship game appearances. 
six straight since he's become a starter. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo's got a lot of soul searching. Man. It's so tough. I mean, and I'm saying this from the other side of from the college side, being an Ohio State fan. Like, when it's supposed to be your time and you're supposed to beat a team and they keep beating you, like, oh, this has been going with Michigan, there is almost the same thing like Buffalo. Like, what do you do? And that team is winning Super Bowls, just like Michigan just won the title and Kansas has won Super Bowls. So, yeah, Chiefs are a problem. Yeah, Chiefs are a problem. They got they got into the playoffs and they started moving the ball, but I, I will say, the Dolphins defense that they did go against had a lot of guys had six starters out. Yeah. And, and the Bills also had some key pieces out. But I'm not giving the Bills that out on this one, but just a little food for thought. Just it's just wild, man. It's it's crazy. Then Saturday evening, you have the Packers and the 49ers. Hey man, 49ers, we both expected them to win, but this was down to the wire. This literally was down to the bitter end. Yeah, the 49ers won this game 24-21. It rained most of the night. And, yeah, this game definitely um, could have went either way. Anyone really could have won the game. But other than the turnovers, I thought Jordan Love looked better than yes. um Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy had two throws that should have been interceptions. I mean, hit Packers in their hands, dropped it. Like, he should have thrown two picks. Especially in the first half, Purdy really struggled when it was um when the rain was pouring down. I mean, he was missing guys. I mean, <laughs> literally dirting balls, just dirting like swing pass and shit. Mm-hmm. Just couldn't um hold on to the ball. But then um the second half he started to get um more accurate with the football. Both of these um running games shine in this game. Green Bay rushed for 136 yards. Um San Francisco rushed for 111. Both averaging a little under um five yards a carry. Love's first pick in the third quarter is what really started to come back for the 49ers. They were up um 21-14, and um Love threw a pick. It was behind the um tight end Musgraves, I think, and that ended up getting picked off, and the 49ers go and get a field goal off that. The Packers next drive to get to the 49ers 23-yard line, and then they miss a field goal. And then um the 49ers offense just milks five minutes off the clock. C Mac gets um his second score of the game to go up 24 21. And then um that leads to um Jordan Love throwing the most Brett Favre fucking interception I've ever seen in my life. Literally threw it across his body in the middle. Oh my god, he's like rolling right and just chucks that bitch say that that is somewhere. (laughs) Just throws a bitch and oh god, that pick was so bad. But credit Green Bay for fighting this game. If they didn't um if they didn't have the mistakes, the turnovers, the missed field goal, I think they would have won this game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this one of those things are obviously losing is losing, but future is bright for Green Bay, man. Like they were a ten point underdog in this game. And they like you said, if it wasn't for a literally to the T a far like interception that they Green Bay could have won that game, man. Yeah, I mean, Lafleur Lafleur is a good coach. Like I thought that he's really Shanahan proven going, it this year. Now, yeah, he's definitely proven it this year with Jordan Love. I thought Shanahan was going on him again, but this is what this is what the Packers been doing. You know, first drive of the game to get they get down the field, score. Um, actually, get down field, get a field goal. They end up going to the game. It's like um. They go up to halftime, it's like 7-6, to six, I believe. But, yeah, the Packers showed up to play. Jordan Love looked good. Before we're scheming up receivers wide open, and obviously it wasn't as bad as the Cowboys game. Motherfuckers were right, running wide open. But Jordan Love had some big windows to throw into because people were wide open. And, yeah, the future's definitely bright for um Green Bay. Aaron Jones had a big game. He had a big 50-yard run that um mm-hmm. that, set, that set up the missed field goal. So, yeah. That game, um, Green Bay has nothing to um, hang their heads down about. They really shouldn't have been in that game to begin with. Like, they didn't think they were going to be in the spot to begin with. Like, at the beginning of the year, we thought that was the Lions' division to lose. We yep. thought Green Bay was, you know, in a rebuild. And, yeah, the future is definitely looking bright for Green Bay. They're definitely about to be a factor next year in the NFC for sure. Mm-hmm. So then we got the final four, man. 
We got the Chiefs have to go on the road again. Patrick Mahomes' second road game in his playoff career. Going to the number one seed, Baltimore Ravens. You got Lamar Jackson trying to go to his first ever Super Bowl. This is his first ever AFC Championship game. And he has to go against the team that's been here six straight years. The defending champs, Kansas City, Justin Menya. You, you can't write it any better than this. Yeah, man. Lamar Jackson will have to beat the big dog. The mm-hmm. true big dog of the NFL to make it to a Super Bowl. So if the Ravens do win this game, there ain't going to be no more motherfucking questions about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is going to be firmly in that elite company at mm-hmm. AFC, at AFC quarterback. Shit, he's going to be higher than Josh Allen for goddamn sure. Oh, yeah. Josh Allen has not been there yet. I will say the Ravens are a significantly better team than the Bills with, with better coaching. But besides the fact, Lamar Jackson is out here getting it done. KC is 3-1 and one in the last four matchups. In, the, in this matchup, the Ravens beat um, the Texans last week. They outscored the Texans um, 24 to nothing in the second half. It was tied well, 10-10. That second half, I'm pretty sure Harbaugh, for people who listen to our college one, he gave him the Dan Landing speech where he's like, yeah, it's time to end this fairy tale. It's time to end their fairy tale. I'm pretty sure he gave the Ravens that speech and Houston's fairy tale ended. <laughs> the Ravens didn't give up a... Um, the defense didn't give up a touchdown in the game. Nope. They only no. gave up a special team touchdown, which also probably pissed off pissed off Harbaugh. You know, special teams, that's his bread and butter. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pro- that's why they probably will, will fire up the um team's ass. But yeah, this will be Mahomes, like we said. Mahomes six straight AFC championship game appearance. The man's three and two in the AFC championship game. This is Lamar Jackson's first. The last time the Ravens made the AFC championship game was when they um Went to the Super Bowl in the 2012 season. Both of these defenses are about to be starring in this matchup. Their defenses are one and two and points allowed. I think the Ravens are going to come out and win this game. They have a better roster. Their defense, their defense is their defense is built to stop match packs from Mahomes. Just some of the things that the Chiefs like to do. I think the Ravens are really set up. To stop some of that, you have Lamar playing at an MVP level. The Ravens have more reliable weapons than the Chiefs. You, you could arguably say the Ravens' defense is better than the Chiefs. I'm just scared about that Mahomes factor, man. That, that, that's what it comes down to. Like, you know, this is a this, this, this is the best quarterback right now in, in this new generation of um, NFL quarterbacks, and that's the only thing that's scaring me because he had no business winning last week against the Bills. With the way they've been playing all season, the way that offense has looked, the way the team has looked, the vibes around the team. I don't know if it's Taylor Swift. I don't know what it is, but, you know, they got Patrick Mahomes. They got Taylor Swift and all her cronies, fans, you know, doing voodoo, doing women. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on, but. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, that's, that's the best way to explain it because ain't no, the Kansas City <laughs> team we watched all year, ain't no way they played like that last year. I don't know what Kansas City team showed. Like, it, something's changed. Like it might have been literally playoff switch, but the regular season they were bad. There was a time before Denver gave up; they were one spot behind them. Yeah, man. Like that—that is the only thing that's giving me pause from just like loading everything. I mean, I already bet the Ravens, but like just throwing more money on, on that game. I'm just like, you know, this nigga like Patrick Mahomes is really like that, bro, in every sense of the word, and. You know, in these situations, he comes out and he performs. And, you know, in playoff situations when he's down, he always comes back. He's he's the scariest player in the NFL. I don't think it's really up for debate. And you have a scary one on the other side with Lamar Jackson as well. Like, the Mahomes factor scares me. But I think the Ravens pull this out. Jim Harbaugh hasn't been in this spot in in over um, 11 years, so... It's time for them. The roster's good. The team's good. The coaching is the coaching is solid. They got the game at home. I think the Ravens pull this out if they can just stop Mahomes from doing Mahomes type of shit. Man, they have to. This is ah, man. Ric Flair said it best. Man, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And we talk about the six straight. And Patrick Mahomes' career, like I said it last week, I'll say it again, 
Only two people have beaten him in the playoffs. One's retired, and Is one's hurt. Tom Brady? Yeah. And one's hurt. One's coming back next year, so that'll obviously be in the mix. But they're the only two. And you talk about this young generation and only one, and then this generation, and then the GOAT's been able to beat them, and none of you other young kids have. Like, you guys are going to get forgotten about. Because you all are just going to be like, oh, we lived in. You guys are in the Patrick Mahomes there and didn't do shit at anything in it. This is Lamar's chance, man. Like, people are talking about, oh, if they make the Super Bowl, his legacy, all that stuff. Think about if the Ravens win this game and win the Super Bowl. Then you're putting Lamar Jackson as already, like, a top, resume-wise, a top 15, 20 quarterback ever. Two MVPs, a potential Super Bowl, and he, and if they win, he'd be Super Bowl MVP. People don't got that, man. Like, there's a lot on the line for his legacy. He's got to win. And, bro, they got to do it. Ravens win this game. They got to do it. I just don't know how many times they can, you know, expect to be back in this spot, in this game, in the division that they play in. You yes. Know, AFC North is always, you know. Next year, I can't wait to do the preview on that division. Can't yeah, wait. Rough. A rough knockout, drag it out division. Like that division is always just tough. We need to see what the Steelers come with. We need to see if Deshaun Wat- Watson can still fucking play football. But yeah, that division's tough. So you don't know how many times you're going to be in this situation with all the quarterbacks in the AFC. I know you, Patrick Holmes, is at that is you know a mm-hmm. step ahead of all these guys. But you know you still got Joe. Bur- you still got Joe Burrow in there. You still got Josh Allen. Like. Those teams are going, these teams are going to be fighting each other, you know, probably for the next five years plus for playoff position, for AFC championships, for Super Bowl appearances, all that shit. So, yeah, you got Patrick, like you said, at the top. You got Joe Burrow, the only two of this new generation in the AFC who have been the Super Bowls. Then you got the people like the, well, Lamar, because he's won an MVP. And if he beats Patrick, well, then you got Josh Allen. So those are like the four. But then even we talk about Sean, Justin, you got these young guns coming up, man. What Houston did, CJ's he's not coming. He's here. Yeah, That's CJ. Yeah, I mean CJ Stroud's coming. Look, let's see what the Texans do. Let's see how they bolster their their roster up. I I'm sorry. I, I can't put the drags in that. The they were anymore, so disappointing but... this year, man. I have such <laughs> high so... hopes for them. I mean, but they're they're a year removed from losing to the Chiefs. So if they can ever turn it around, I mean the Colts, the Colts were a game away from being in the playoffs. It's also CJ Stroud. So, and then the Browns, like obviously most of it was Deshaun. Twenty nine percent of their salary cap was on the bench. Deshaun, I mean, hurt Deshaun and each other. Like they're a really good team, and they went eleven. They won eleven games. So, like you said, besides the none of these spots are obviously guaranteed, but the Chiefs have been there six straight years. Besides the Chiefs, none of these spots are guaranteed. No, they're not. So the Ravens. I don't think Lamar should be thinking about his legacy right now. He's got to worry about beating the Chiefs on Sunday. And shoot, that's what he Chiefs, needs. Do the Chiefs win it? Do they even win their division next year? If Mister Hallball goes and saves the uh, the Chargers, because we talk about that team has been loaded with talent for years and they never perform. I, I did all that and forgot all about the um, Chargers and Justin Herbert and Justin Herbert. Yeah. Yeah, but Justin Herbert is supremely talented, and he ever gets some, you know, a good coach around him that actually knows what the fuck they're doing, and not Brandon Staley. They'll be up in that mix too. So, so. trying to get hardball. So yeah, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens just need to worry about this game on Sunday. You know, one game at a time. Let's not, you know, make the game bigger than it has to be. Let's leave that to us. Leave that to the motherfuckers, fuckers on podcast talking shit, but. Yeah, they, we don't know if they're going to be back in this situation. So, yeah, the Ravens got to do it, and I think they have the team. I think they have the team to do it. And yeah, that's why I got on it. Hang on, man, they're going to be hungry. Baltimore, that place is going to be going to be rocking. We're going. I can't wait for that game. It's a legacy game for both. But if Lamar wins, man. Beats Patrick AFC Championship game. Not his legacy. Like you said, critics are done. They're done. Oh, for Lamar Jackson, he he cemented two time MVP, Super Bowl appearance. Like it's over. Yeah, it's over. It's over. And I heard someone back to our conversation about, you know, the new generation's um Brady Manning. Mm-hmm. 
you know, Lamar Jackson is kind of having a similar arc to um Peyton Manning. You know, he's win he's winning the MVPs. He's had the question marks in the playoffs, and now he's gotten to the AFC Championship game. And he has that shit at home waiting for him with a fucking loaded roster. What are you gonna do? What you gonna do, brother? What are you gonna do? Um, next game in the NFC side, you got the Lions and the 49ers. This obviously we talked about teams we didn't expect. I mean, we didn't think Baltimore would make like the AFC championship. I don't think, and we definitely didn't think Detroit would make the NFC championship game, but they're here, man. They're prolific. You already said they won the last game against the Bucks 31 23. That was another game where Bucks had a chance to win that game too, and that game ended in a, both NFC games ended on a pick the by Bucks, the losing team. The Bucks were fighting. And yeah, I, I was on the Bucks last week. I bet them, and if they will win that game, I was ready to have a whole Baker Mayfield soliloquy. How he how he went up in the Ohio State. How he went up into the shoe when he was in college and beat them. How he showed up against Georgia, even though he lost. Even though they lost. How he um in Cleveland got them their first playoff game and was um a bad turnover away from beating the Chiefs. I had all this shit ready for Baker, but he didn't win. Yeah, he didn't win. I mean, I was, I was there was one touch. One of besides the last interception that was just an interception that was bad. Good play on the defense. There was one. It went right through Mike Evans' hands. Yeah, that was that bad. One, that one was tough. That one but was tough. Man threw for three forty nine and three tutties. Yeah, ba- Baker was cooking. Ba- Baker was cooking, and I think the Bucks are going. You know, keep him around, and in that division, I don't really think they have to. You know, get another quarterback as long as they're in the um, NFC South and. Those dog shit teams like the Saints and the Falcons and the Panthers are still there. I like I like what the Bucks are doing. And it's crazy too. I like he, Baker down there, resurgence. Add another 10 years to his career. He really did. From this run. He did. And even um Mike Evans, where people might say he like he had that drop or whatnot that turned into a pick. Man had eight catches for 147, one touchdown. I mean, he was still eating, though. Yeah, <laughs> he, he still got his, though. Like, Mike, hey, you've been on Mike Evans. I, I've known about Mike Evans since the beginning. I know he's like that. He's just quiet, does his job, and gets his numbers. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But shout out to Detroit winning. Like, they did what the Bills should. They were at home, put on for the city. Jared Goff, man, he's in a, another conference championship game going against the 49ers. Justin, man, I. I know this sounds crazy because obviously the the 49ers have to win this game. They have to. They got to win, man, because every year, just like different from the Bills, obviously, but every year the 49ers have said if they are fully healthy, Super Bowl, it's ours. Every year, if we were healthy against the Eagles, which is true if you had a real quarterback, we win. If we were healthy then, if we were healthy this, if we didn't have Garoppolo this, all that, they don't have any of that stuff. They're all healthy. All their stars. We'll see what Debo does, but 98% of the team's healthy. They got to do it, man, because... Yeah, they say Debo's 50-50 going to play. That motherfucker playing. Yeah. He's playing. I don't know if how they don't beat effective Detroit, he's going to be, but he's playing. If they don't beat Detroit, bro, we're going to have some conversations about them. Man, I... The 49ers still win this game on paper. There is a huge variance in this game, if we're being completely honest. I can see this game where the 49ers just absolutely dog walk mm-hmm. the Lions, like just destroy them because we know, you know, Detroit's secondary is not good. Yep. So you will be able to pass on this team. Oh, yeah. The 49ers secondary is a little suspect. We saw Green Bay be able to pass on this team. You saw Green Bay be able to run on this team. The Lions have two running backs that yep. can get on the ground. Jameer Gibbs is special. I love yes. that man. That man is great player. You have Jared Goff, who can pull himself in some history. He is one of only um, three other men to take two franchises to the conference championship game. He's in a conversations with the likes of Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, and then the other one is Kurt Warner. That's three crazy. Hall of Famers. That's crazy. Yeah, so... Justin, he wasn't even supposed to be starting this long. It was no. supposed to be a one-year dump, and that's it. No, but like you said, the pressure is all on the... um. 49ers to finally win a win a Super Bowl because, like you said, it's always something with them. It's always something of why they why they can't get there. 
um, all that. But I expect points in this game. I think I'm going with Detroit here. I know the Forty Niners. <laughs> I think the Forty Nine. I know the Forty Niners have to win this game. They are more talented than the Lions. Kyle Shanahan is a better head coach than Dan Campbell. Now I think Dan Campbell, you know, motivates his team better. His offensive coordinator, um, Ben Johnson, is going to have to go toe to toe with Shanahan. And I think Ben Johnson is going to be able to scheme up some shit that can get um, that can get this moving. The weather in um San Francisco right now, um, I mean for the game, is supposed to be like clear like no rain so i think jared goff is going to be able to get shit done the um lions defense is i mean the lions um offensive line is a strong unit so i don't think they're i don't think on the 49ers d line is going to be blowing shit up getting pressure on them crazy like that and we all know a comfortable jared goff can make shit happen yes if jared goff is comfortable he's going to make shit happen i really like the over in this game i'm probably going to bet that once we get off of this bitch but I think I think the Lions are gonna go up in there and you know get to the Super Bowl. Oh, really really San Francisco is gonna be a DefCon 500 if they lose this game. That's fine. I, mean, oh, oh, oh. I don't really like those niggas to begin with, but I think the Lions are gonna do it. Is is their time? Oh, how is it, the Lions are hot. They are yeah. hot right now. I know. I talk about Mike. They got another guy I love on that team, Amon St. Brown. Man. Oh, oh, my nigga St. Brown, bro. Respect on them. But. You said obviously earlier that they got the. And the Don't other forget team. about Sam Laporte, the Iowa tight end. Yep, and um, M. N. Kibble. I mean, we sit right next to Sam Laporte of family friends at the OSU women's game, so they always have to rush to watch Detroit games. But you talked about Patrick Mahomes being like the ultimate weapon in the previous thing, and I agree from a playoff standpoint. But San Francisco, they have the true weapon. They have CMC. When that boy is healthy. He cannot be stopped. Period. No, he can break games alone. No, and and like I said, I I think this game is going to be a shootout. I really do. I don't think neither of these defenses are going to be stopping them each other. Now, I do see a scenario where the where the Forty ers defensive line just takes over a game, but I, I think the Lions' um offensive line is good enough to not let that shit happen. And like I said, if Jared Goff is comfortable. He's able to see the field, be confident in that pocket, and, you know, get it to guys like Jameer Gibbs and St. Brown and Reynolds and Laporta and all those guys. I think um, the Lions can go in and beat them. I really do. I mean, from what I saw them do against Green Bay, mm-hmm. I, I'm not confident in this team that, you know, just go out there and handle business like that. I'm just not. Just like the way Green Bay played, like, Detroit and Green Bay are very similar teams in my eyes. Shoot, remember, you know, weapon- Green Bay destroyed Detroit on Thanksgiving. That started their run, right? So, I don't see, I don't see why, I don't see why Detroit can't come in there and essentially do the same thing. Oh, it's gonna be something. It is gonna be something. So, currently, right now, you would have Baltimore, Detroit, which I think a lot of America would like some new teams in there, and I would have Baltimore in. San Francisco. We're just hoping for Baltimore, but we won't be surprised if somehow Kansas does it again. I'm telling you right now, I do not want the NFL want Kansas City in that Super Bowl now. Yes. They want yes, know, they the, do. the Taylor Swift effect. They they want that team in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, they're gonna do whatever it takes for it to happen. I'm <laughs> telling you that don't, right don't, now. Don't put that shit into the universe. I do not. Don't. Well, you already saw they picked the referee team that penalizes the home teams the most in the league. Man. Of course they are, man. <laughs> yeah, like the fix is in, man. Oh, the script, the script writers are working right now. They're oh, working. Yeah. But it's it's gonna be crazy. I and then just real quick, man, just to talk about why you would why I really think it's really in. Just reading you all these numbers, and these are all like records for what the time they did. The lowest watched game was Saturday afternoon. The Texans Ravens, obviously, because that game became uncompetitive. Thirty one point eight million. <laughs> Saturday night, Saturday night, where it's still cold wherever people go, but people are still doing stuff. Packers Niners thirty seven point five million. Bucks and Lions Sunday three thirty forty point four million people. And Sunday night, Bills Chiefs, fifty point three million. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good ass game though. But it was. But just like you said, good game, the Swifty crone, everything. You don't think they want to have that number pop it in a Super Bowl? Bro, come on now. <laughs> wow. That I how how many more people can you get to watch the fucking Super Bowl though? That's true. But then Justin, I've learned like we're in this one, we're watching a whole bunch of sports also. There's millions of people out there in the Taylor Swift demographic, Caucasian, white, that don't watch sports. Yeah. That, and now they're that, watching this shit, and they're not even watching the sport, bro. Can you imagine being so obsessed with someone? You're sitting on a couch watching, waiting for them to pop on the screen for two seconds. Man, eh, speaking of popping on the screen and that damn press box, that's Swift Kelsey goddamn press box. I don't got a problem with Taylor Swift being there. Swift Kelsey but that that goddamn box, all those fucking people. Who the hell are some some of all of you? Like, I feel like the, I feel like they're grifting. I feel like a lot of those motherfuckers in that box are grifting off the fame. Oh you yeah, know? I just have to say it because that's what gets me mad about when they show that damn box. Taylor Swift, you know that bitch made good music. I ain't. I don't got nothing bad to say about her. It's the grifters in that damn box behind her. Yo, can get the fuck out of there. Brittany, Brittany Mahomes out here living it up. Living it up. Oh, I'm friends with Taylor Swift now. Just Bro, oh. I knew if she was up when I really saw her in a picture holding hands on a Saturday night in New York. Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez, Bella. I, I was like, oh, my God. Brittany has really become part of that crew. She is, re- she is up, up. She, she had no business being with that crew. You are a football wife. You are and a that, football wife. You take your ass home and you watch those kids and you go to games. That's what you need to be doing. And then imagine, You don't need to be, be with the real celebrities. No. You are a football wife. You get a reality show called Football Wives, not whatever the fuck everyone else is doing. Not that celebrity type shit. Justin, and then put this in perspective. If the Chiefs make the Super Bowl, I think all those drifting people, they're going to be out of that box. It's all gonna be famous people. Super Bowl is in Vegas. Oh, you yeah. know they' about to. I see Gomez going there. I see the Hadid sisters going in there, bro. You are. I'm telling yeah. you. All, all you randos in that box, y'all ain't getting no fucking ticket. Y'all ain't coming. <laughs> like I'm telling you, the Super Bowl wants all. Like, man, they they want it, bro. They they want it bad. I don't. I'm I'm tired of the cheat. They need to be put down because. Uh, I'm so sick of this damn team. Six I straight am AMC championship games. Like, Justin, come on now. We are in a thing where if they do not get put down now, it is officially we're back in New England 2.0. Yeah. And we just finished. We literally just finished that. Yeah. And um, New Eng- and the Chiefs haven't had the law yet, at least with the Patriots between um 07 and um the Seahawks Super Bowl. Oh, not not the Seahawks Super Bowl. But between um oh between yeah between oh seven and the Seahawks Super Bowl, they weren't winning. They were there, but they weren't winning. Yeah, yeah. And shoot, the only time Patrick Mahomes has lost the Super Bowl is to Tom Brady. He's gone. So people got to step up. If you want to not be deemed, bro, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be the afterthought. You really don't. You don't want to be the Charles Barkley. You don't want to be the John Stockton Carmelone. You don't want to be the freaking. Well, he won titles after the dude retired for two years. You don't want to be the Clyde Drexler. You don't want to be the Hakeem where it's like, y'all great. Y'all doing all this stuff. But when one dude was playing, y'all didn't win shit. You don't want to be a part of that. I've I've heard other podcasts say, you know, Mahomes is a Jordan of this shit right now. Well, which I can't disagree with at this point. The way he's the way he went in, the way he's getting there and you know football different so he ain't gonna win the title every goddamn oh, year like jordan hell, was but no. being in six straight afc championship games like i say that's more lebron because lebron was in nine straight finals <laughs> true true like, and he was running the east just like right now bro like what the hell is going on it's the afc this is the most competitive afc ever and it's still the same team in the afc championship game that that, that is actually good look Patrick Mahomes is LeBron of the goddamn NFL. Yeah, I'm I'm saying that. That's that's about every LeBron year now is guaranteed he's in the AFC Championship game, and he didn't even have the home game in the divisional round. Man, he should have been at home. I said that months ago. That wasn't going to matter, but 
fucking the way the team looked. I just think they were going to win even if they did have the home field. Me either. Way, the, as she as they were playing. Me either. And here we are. They play their best game, of course, when they needed it the most. That's what champions do. Yeah. And before we go off, let's do winners and losers this week. Mine aren't going to be NFL because fucking basketball oh. yesterday was goddamn something. Okay. My winner, my winner is about the Joel Embiid. Okay. 70, uh, a seven, drop a 70 burger on the Spurs for no reason. Actually, not for no reason. He had a, that was um the 18 year anniversary did. of Kobe dropping 81. Yep. And then um my loser would have to be Carl Anthony Towns, who had 64 points, but had 44 at halftime, which means only had 20 in the second half, didn't do shit in the fourth quarter, and they fucking lost to the Hornets, who suck. Had to get that off my chest. All right. Where's okay? Hmm. Oh man, I like that. Going to a different, going to a different sport. I want to pick different people. So pick Joel. I mean, Joel, obviously, that's just and you know what's crazy? I don't think he took uh, if I remember he didn't take a three that game. Nah, he had some threes. Someone someone sent someone sent me about them hitting um his over in threes. That's that's the only reason why really? I know that. But yeah, but he, oh. he had a couple. Yeah, he had Let me at just least make a sure the ex- I want to give you the exact number on the threes though, because it was it was very minimum. And he hit one he hit one three. He oh, went one, one. two. Wow. Seventy points on one three. You know, this is what I want to say. Wow. For people. And I'm actually gonna give this man credit on this, Colin Cowherd, because he's right. Justin, what happened to all these people? We talked about this one time off air. What happened to all these people saying big men are dead? And small ball is it. Small ball, Joel Embiid, Jokic, Giannis, they're just realizing these little dudes can't guard them, bro. Well, the when the Warriors were out here mm-hmm. taking over the fucking league, mm-hmm. you know... Joel Embiid was hurt for real. Like he was, yep. he was still, he was still really young. Giannis was real, was really young. Jokic was still finding his way. Yep. Um, yeah, those are really the main guys. Yeah. So that's the thing. But the NBA has always been about big motherfuckers getting their shit, mm-hmm. doing that shit. It's always been about that. If you got shit, Anthony Davis too. Anthony Davis has been open. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a big guy who can, you know, dominate a game. That shit's hard to stop. You have to dedicate resources to find someone on the team that can stop that guy, and little people can't can't do it. There's a middle, there's a premium on um big guys who can do something in the NBA, and you have one of them. It makes you really hard to stop. And during that um Warriors run, you know the LeBron um the LeBron Warriors run of the um, mid to late um teens, mm-hmm. these teams just didn't have it. And these big men weren't fully realized yet. And now that they, you know, gotten into their groove, it's a problem. 70 points on only one three. I, like, it, it's crazy. Like, you got to, and you talked about it, man. Like, you got to have a big man to beat Denver. You don't have a big man. You ain't beating them. Period. No, no, no. You need some, you need someone big. Like, you're not, you're not just going to go up in there with, you know, a bunch of six, eight, six, nine wings, and expect and expect to stop expect to stop Denver. No, and even look at De- uh, Boston; they got better. What they get? Even I mean, even though he's like he ain't that big a banger, but they got a big. They got Kristoff. They went and got a big. Yeah, KP Porzingis seven three body uh, out uh, there and shit the buck and then the Bucks too. Some of their guys, you know. When they won tell, they had Brooke Lopez at center. Yep. They had Giannis Brooke Lopez. Yep. Bigs. Yep. Yeah, man. You you need a you need a stable big to win. I'm gonna give my stuff to the to the to the big men of the NBA dominating. Like it's it's crazy. But my loser, my loser is gonna be mainstream media because oh. the seats that I have, I have very good seats at these women's games. I was literally face to face with the incident of the fan running there, probably recording for her TikTok that accidentally ran into Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark did flop her hands. It was not that deep. And then got carried off. They were both fine. All that in the court storming part. 
My thing with the mainstream media, and this is what, and I really do not want to get political, but this is what a lot of people, the blue collar people, have issue with that mainstream media. If that was anyone fucking else, you would not give a shit. You would not care. You it wouldn't give Caitlin a shit. Clark? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Because, um, what you want to call it? Motherfuckers, um, Kyle just stormed the court all the time. Yeah. But just because. A fan accidentally, they both ran into each other. Y'all talking about this so dangerous. All oh, and you made a big story out of it. Fuck all of you. Every single one of y'all. Because any other normal Joe Schmo player, I don't happen. And let's just keep buck with ESPN. Y'all only know one player. You only know Caitlin Clark. Y'all ain't in this shit. Uh Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea Myers um episode just came out and we talked about that. Y'all only talking about Caitlin Clark, and she's been doing this her whole career. You just started talking about her last year. Like, let's let's stop the. That's the problem with the women's sports little rant there. Like, if you're going to talk about women's sports, you got to talk about all these players out here who are fucking hooping. So, just throw that out there. Mainstream media got to get better. Man. Yeah, I agree. You can't only talk about the needle mover. You got to bring everyone else up with her now. Man, that ain't good business. And shoot, we want to talk. Uh, now I got one more winner because we talk about Mito movers. WWE out, out here really doing shit. Oh, shout out <laughs> we to just WWE. We're talking about everything right now. Shout out to WWE. I mean, I'm talking about everything we talk about. Royal Rumble preview coming soon, but WWE out here doing shit, man. Ten year, five billion dollar deal with Netflix starting next year. Like Netflix is going into the live stuff, and they picked Raw to be the fir first sports ish one. So. Rock is a board member. They out here, man. They out here. Our yeah. boy, Paul Levesque, Triple H, and Nick Connor out here really doing this shit. Yeah, that, that is a big move. WWE is always getting money. As a consumer, though, I don't know how I feel about Netflix. I don't know how yeah. I feel about having to watch Raw on Netflix. I don't know how that's going to be. We're going to have to. Yeah, that's going to be the thing, too. That's going to be real. Not being Ooh. able to flip channels, you know, mm -hmm. they're in the commercials and shit. Like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about but, that. But, Justin, the bright side, Raw, they already said they go going commercial free. This shit might be only two hours now. Oh, that will be a game changer. Now they can go two hours because they don't got to pay the commercials. No fee no more. That, oh, my. That would make the product so much better if Raw was not three hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. That changes things, then. We're going to have to That's, take a trade that, off. That changes my... That, quells my fears because if it's only two hours i can commit for two hours every monday mm -hmm. three hours is what gets me that shit can't be a movie every single fucking monday i'm sorry <laughs> but yeah man it's it's a movie wwe out here doing shit women's sports out here doing shit like mainstream media they, they they ask but we still out here man i can't wait because as the people say this is the last real week of football because the next when we talk it's, it's spectacle time it's america's holiday yeah, everyone who hasn't been um, following or giving the fuck this season, come in for um, Super Bowl. But yeah, it is an American holiday. That being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. We'll be back. We talk about who's in the Super Bowl, do our preview. And with that being said, L7C signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.